Hello everyone and welcome to the 15th Hammer tutorial in the version 2 series. This tutorial will apply to all Source Engine games. I will be using Counter-Strike Global Offensive to complete this tutorial. Today we will be creating a 3D skybox to line up with our actual map. A 3D skybox is the small representation that is then enlarged around your level to make it seem like the world extends further than it actually does. This is a purely visual thing but it should be done in most levels because it makes the world seem more complete when it's done properly. When you create your 3D skybox you're going to actually build it around your level like you're building your level just any way you would and then we shrink it down and move it off to the side. So the first step is to actually construct what would be your 3D skybox around your level. The best way to start this is to go over to the auto tab in Viz Groups and uncheck sky. This will automatically hide all of the sky box texture from your level leaving just what your level is. Now we're going to build around this. Basically I'm just going to do a simple little thing where I'm going to put a hill over here and I'm going to extend off of this building a little bit. We're going to make sure that our textures are going to align perfectly when they scale into our 3D skybox and that we have no weird scaling problems. So I'm just going to go ahead and start by building up my 3D skybox really quick and then we'll take it from there. Alright, now that I have everything that I want to be my 3D skybox created and built around my level, how I would want it to appear, this is what it's going to look like in-game when we compile with our 3D skybox. So there's a few things that I do want you guys to notice before I compile this, and we shrink it down actually. These parts over here, what's selected, is going to be my 3D skybox. So these are actually going to exist in another part of the level, and then like I said, be enlarged. Do notice that the texture alignment is perfect here and we need to keep this and preserve it when we scale down so that way we don't see any anomalies in texture alignment when we go ahead and compile our level. This is a very simple way to do this and make sure that it always matches up and you always want to make sure that it matches up so that way your level looks the best. We also have some texture matching over here for the alignment. Now do notice that this is very basic, very simple and there's not much to it. There are some props that you can add. There are some prop statics that have been created by Valve. They're automatically at a 1 16th of the size and you can place them in your 3D skybox just like normal, which we'll place after we scale down our 3D skybox. Before we can scale, we need to place one entity in our level to tell the game where our 3D skybox is going to be represented. So press Shift E to drop a new entity and change this class to sky underscore camera. Once you have this, we'll see 3D Skybox scale. This is automatically set to 16 by default, and this is how much it's going to scale up everything in the 3D Skybox. Just leave all of these alone. We'll play with the fog settings in the 16th tutorial to follow this one. Now, after you have your sky camera in your level, what you're going to do is you're going to want to place it on the origin of the level. For those wondering what the origin is, if we create a new map file here, we'll see that we have these teal lines in our grid. What these teal lines represent are the origin, or 0, 0, 0, or the center of the level, which is also represented in our 3D view by this red, green, and blue line. We need to put this exactly in the center. So if we cut the sky camera out, then select our entire level and press H to hide it, we can easily see these teal lines. And now we're just going to drag our sky camera to be directly in the center of the map. It cannot be any bit off. It has to be exactly at the center of the map. If it's not at the center of the map, you'll experience issues when you scale it down. Unhide your entire level, and now we're going to select everything that we want to be our 3D skybox. Once that's selected, also select your sky camera. Now, turn on texture lock, which is the TL with the two arrows on the side. This automatically makes it so that way when you scale a brush, the texture is scaled with it. Now press Control M to open the transform window, Set the mode to scale, and set the X, Y, and Z value to 0 0.0625. 0 0.0625 is 1 16th in decimal. So click OK, and we're left with this teeny little version of our level. 
So what the sky camera actually represents here is the origin of the grid, but now we can move it around. Well, notice when we look at these, the textures are extremely small. That is because it preserved the scale of the textures when we scaled it down. Now we're just going to take what it would be our 3D skybox and move it somewhere else to a remote area that's out of the way. The 3D skybox can be anywhere in your level, and it just has to exist for it to work. Now that we're off to the side here, we're going to turn on our sky this group again to get the skybox back around our level. We're going to select the tool skybox texture and put a box around our 3D skybox. Once we've created the box, hit tools and then hollow and put a value of negative 16 in here. This will hollow the box outward 16 units. If you'd like to make the box bigger, you can. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be super perfect. And now our 3D skybox is created and nearly ready to go. You may experience some shadow issues in your 3D skybox. To go around this on displacements, you'll want to open the face edit sheet with shift A, go to the displacement tab, and check no physics, hall, or ray collision. These will make it so that way these don't have physics, hall, or cast shadows on things. If you get strange lighting issues, please make sure that you've checked your 3D skybox to see if there's any issues in there. It's also good to do no physics and hall collision so that way collisions aren't processed in your 3D skybox. As for the brushes in your 3D skybox, there should be no brushes that can split a vis leaf. This means that all brushes must be an entity of some sort, preferably a function detail. So select all of your brushes and press Ctrl T to make them a function detail. Now let's place a prop in our level in the 3D skybox. So we're going to place a prop static and we're going to do a world model search just for skybox. Once we've done that search, we'll see that we have some buildings that are quite tiny um, in comparative to the grid. These are automatically already sized down to be 1 16th. Here is the big mountain scene from Monastery. Um, what we're just going to do is we're just going to, there should be a water tower. We're going to place this little teeny tiny water tower just in our level. Just behind some of our stuff. Happy little water towers. And then maybe once that's done... We'll add some trees behind. Now, once you're happy with your 3D skybox and everything's placed, just do a once over to make sure that you've set everything correctly. Make sure that our displacements have an array, hall, or physics collisions. Our brushes are function details. And if you experience shadow properties, once again, make sure that you have disable shadows set to yes on any props in your 3D skybox. This is very important for props because they will block out the sun. When VRAD is computed for your level, it actually fires the rays through the 3D skybox onto your level. So if there's something in your 3D skybox that should cast a shadow in the real world as if it was actually there, it will cast that shadow. So just again, make sure that if you get weird shadow anomalies, you check your 3D skybox. I'm going to go ahead and compile the level now. All right, now that we're in game, We'll see that we actually have our 3D skybox here. We have our three water towers off to the back as a prop. We have our hills right here, and we have our trees. Now you will notice that the shadows in the 3D skybox are actually quite different than normal shadows. This is because when they're scaled down, they retain the same light map grid scale, which is 16. If you really need higher definition shadows in your 3D skybox, you can lower the light map scale, but I do advise against it. That should be used very sparingly. A good example of this is right here because we see the shadow changes as it goes to the 3D skybox. But we do see that the textures do align without an issue right on top of our normal level, so that's good. And we can also see that this is the 3D skybox because there are no bullet collisions on that part of our level. When we come over here, we also see that this aligns perfectly without a problem. And the 3D Skybox actually looks pretty decent. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Normally, you won't be able to see down there. So this looks this looks actually pretty good for a quick and dirty 3D Skybox. There's one limitation of 3D Skyboxes, and that is that they are always rendered behind your level. Now, this doesn't seem like it could be an issue, except for the fact that if you are somehow able to see a room that would be normally behind your 3D skybox logically, 
but the game's going to render it on top because it's technically in the world instead of the 3D skybox. An example of this is the hallway right here. That hallway is being drawn, but I can see it through the 3D skybox because it's technically in my world and not the 3D skybox. So that's just one small thing to note when you create your 3D skybox. I hope this tutorial helped you create 3D skyboxes in your level the proper way to get the scaling down. If you have any questions, please feel free to shoot me an email or post a question on my website. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for more V2 tutorials and happy mapping.